Proverbs 29, 18 says, Without a vision, the people perish. And let me tell you, that is so true. I cannot tell you how true that is. At different times in my life when I felt like, quite possibly, what I've been believing God for personally. What if I was deceived? What if, you know, like, and then, and then it's like I go into this downward spiral of like not having any hope. <laughs> <laughs> and just being frustrated. And I mean, anyway, that's, a whole different thing. That's just an example from me, but I can't think of a better example of having no hope of Proverbs twenty nine eighteen than what we call the black pill community. Now, for those of you who do not know what the black pill community is, so within the truther movement, you have you're people who watch alternative media because, yeah, we, if, if you're a truther, you don't watch the mainstream media. I mean, you might watch clips here and there to see how, like, ridiculous they are. But, um, I mean, minus a few people on there that I, I actually kind of like, like Jesse Waters. Kind of like that guy. But anyway, um, yeah, you just... You don't, you're awake, right? Well, I noticed a few years back that the truther movement began to be divided. The red pill community and the black pill community. And, okay. I'm going to show you guys a few examples, and I just, this is just a few examples. I recently thought to do this. I have seen so many <clears throat> that are like this, that it is, I mean, it's ridiculous how many I've seen that are like this, but I've noticed a pattern within the black pill community. And so I'm just going to show you these couple examples And so, as you can see, that is not the exception. That's, that's the rule among the black pill community. And I'm not saying that to be, you know, rude or anything like that. I'm just saying I, I noticed this pattern years ago um, in the black pill community. And basically... I know, I've been stalling. I'm sorry. I, I, I promise I wasn't meaning to. So the black pill community basically are like the doom and gloom crowd. They're like, there's all of them are bad. All of them are bad. You know, is a, and this is all a big, and you all red pill community, especially you that follow are a bunch of idiots. And we're going to mock you and make you feel stupid. And basically the whole, like, if they had a theme song, it would be like this. Na 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 boo boo, I know more than you do. I mean, for real, I, as ridiculous as that sounds. It's true. Just observe. Don't take my word for it, just observe. Amongst the truther community. And I'm not going to say that I've never seen a person who follows the 17th letter. I'm not going to say that I've never seen one of them get nasty because I have. I have. And, you know, but that's the exception. That's not the rule. Most of the people that I've met within 
this community are so cool, so open-minded, and they have hope for the future. And see, it's not just them. So there's, there's this community, but what really convinces me or really convinced me because I began asking God point blank about this, I found in 2019, right? And it was all by the providence of God. I wasn't looking. In fact, one of my sister's friends randomly sent me a video called And the moment that I saw it, it resonated so much. I mean, it made me tear up. I was like, I know that this is true. I, I, I felt it. Like, I felt it. And then, you know, as time went on, I began to follow people who were smarter than me, who were better at decoding, that I was just, blown out of the water by how there's too many coincidences here. Coincidences, right? And one of the um, says how many coincidences before it's mathematically impossible. And I mean, yeah, like it's, it's insane. And I've seen so many times I like, now, I have some some uh, photos of different things stored in my archives. I don't know whether I'm going to put all of that up here or not for this. Because you can do the research on your own accord. And that's not me being rude. That's just me saying I have experienced this so many times. When Whenever, you know, somebody disagrees with you, about this or anything else, they have a, an opposing viewpoint, the moment you go to show them research, they won't even look at it. They won't even look at it. So if they want to know, they can go find it themselves. Amen. But what really convinced me, guys, wasn't so much that but it was what the prophets were saying and what God was showing me and what he's continued to show me throughout the years because this is the this is the bottom line with me and God dealt with me like I like I've told you guys this before God dealt with me a few years back like I think I've told you guys this story before but if if not I'll tell you again um so I was on Facebook. I think this was like in 2019 because it was when I was still staying with my mom for the time. I had just gotten out of um, the Oxford house. I was arguing with somebody on Facebook and the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to me clear as day. He said, Lindsay, do you need to be right? And I was like, well, no, God. I mean, I, I guess not. I Like, you're the only one who's always right. <laughs> He's like, bingo. So it's okay if you're wrong. You don't have to prove yourself to this person. It's okay if you're wrong. Like, you're not, like, enemy of the state if you're wrong about something. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's okay. Like, you you can be corrected. I mean, that's that's a having a humble stature is if you're willing to be corrected when presented with new information. Like, that is undeniable. And to me, seeing all of this, having followed it since 2019, having seen and having followed prophets that I know are hearing from God, and having seen some of the things that I've seen, some of the things that God has showed me through videos I've shared on this channel. I mean, I have to be careful about what I title them because I don't want to, you know, lose my whole channel because oh, you're spreading misinformation. Have you guys noticed that all the fact checking didn't come out until the truth started coming out? I mean, that's kind of a big like. Wow. I, I, I don't know. I, I just, uh, 
it really astounds me how some people are still so asleep. I'm like, how can you, how can, how can you be fast asleep when it's 2024? But they are. And I, you know what? I'm just going to pray for people. Like, cause I know some people personally that I'm just like, how can you not see? But God show them in Jesus mighty name. Just show them. Hallelujah. Like, thank you. Thank you that I was on the wake up list. Like, that's really cool. It's been, you know what though? I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Oh, it's been a blessing and a curse because I like, I, I'm so honored that God chose me to wake me up, but waiting on it, having the patience, knowing what's going on. I mean, not, not everything, obviously not everything because you know, I, in first Corinthians, I think 13, it says for we know in part and we prophesy in part. So it's not like you can be, you know, super awesome prophet like Isaiah and still not know the whole picture. God does that on purpose so that nobody can boast, so that nobody can be like, well, my name is Lindsay and I just know a little more than you. I mean, people do that. But if you do that, then God will resist you and you're not going to be hearing from God. And this is something I've noticed amongst the black pill crowd is that the spirit behind them, because if you guys remember the video, uh, the, sorry, the pictures that I showed you, those two pictures, um, it's, that's a good example of the black pill crowd. What you notice with that, like, is this like almost arrogance. Like I, I know more than you, like I've got it figured out. You don't have it figured out. I mean, it's one thing to be like, I got a word from God. And, and, and man, this is, this is awesome. This research that I've found, like, wow. And you're really excited about that's one thing, but then lording it over other people and making them feel stupid because I can't believe that you believe in like the spirit behind that is a mocking spirit. And that is not God. There's also an accusatory spirit that works behind that because I have heard so many people say this. Well, I put my faith in God, not in a man, referring to. And so what you're doing when you say that is you're insinuating that the people who follow and who believe that was chosen by God, what you're saying about us is that we put our faith in him and not God. And so what you're doing then is you're coming into agreement with the accuser. You're claiming in that moment that you know more about me than I know about me. I rem Do you all remember when like the Democrats were on a, a tear about, oh, uh, uh, you should feel guilty for being white. And, and you're just inherently racist. Excuse me? No, I'm not. It's like saying somebody is inherently evil. Like we are inherently sinful, but hey, guess what? We were made in the image of the Most High God. And so we have the capacity to become inherently evil or to become inherently holy. And everybody gets that opportunity. And so what I have seen, what I have noticed in the past five or six years is that there are a lot of people that have not had that opportunity. Gen Z, Gen Alpha, heck, even a whole bunch of celebrities. You know, I mean, some of them have chosen their demons and their demons. I, I remember God gave me a dream about this. Uh, God gave me a dream about this in 2020. And I like, I wish that I would have shared it on this platform. I ended up sharing it on my Facebook at the time, which got banned. So I lost it, but I'd had this dream and I'm not going to, I'm not going to repeat the whole dream. I, it was detailed. It was a very prophetic dream. But 
in this dream, there was a massive military guy. I mean, he was bigger than everybody. I was probably nine or 10 feet tall, right? And he's dressed in a military uniform and he comes out and we're like in this barracks, right? And, and, but it's, it's inside and it's outside and dreams are weird. Right. And so he comes out and all these people are just milling about, you know, like here we are. And this military guy lifts a big gun. Don't ask me what kind. I don't know. But he lifts a big gun up in the air and shoots it off and everybody scatters. As soon as he did that, everybody started to divide into two groups. And I, and I just knew instinctively that people were either going to go to God's side or the enemy's side. They were going to either choose Jesus or their demons. And so this guy spoke to me with his mind, said, young lady, you need to get to where you're going. I know whose side you're on. And now looking back on that, you guys, that was an angel. That was obviously, that was an angel because I mean, he was so much bigger and he spoke to me with his mind. And the fact that this angel knew me, that's an honor. That just hit me like a ton of bricks, guys. I've told this dream a few times, but I did not have that realization until now. Wow, Lord, thank you. <laughs> anyway, so the dream like proceeded and people were dividing into two groups and God allowed me, the Holy Spirit allowed me to begin to see what was going on in the enemy's camp, the one where they had chosen their demons. And I was like with them, but I wasn't with them. You know what I mean? It was like my spirit was just like I was kind of flying along, like watching them. And it like they began to fight and to argue and, and they began whipping out knives and literally stabbing one another. And the scene became gruesome. So, so much so that I was like, Jesus, get me out of here, please. I, I can't see this anymore. And he it immediately did. And then, you know, there was more to the dream, but it's like, that is what we're living in right now is seeing people turn on each other. Some of these celebrities and some of these politicians, some of these influencers, whatever they are, that have chosen the enemy's kingdom. They're throwing each other under the bus, anything to save themselves. But even in that, God is merciful. Even in that, God is merciful. And he's like, I want to give everybody the opportunity to come to me because see, God knows what each and every one of those people have been through, how they were raised. That matters to God. You know, if, if, if a person was never taught about the Lord and they were raised to be like a Satanist or raised to be, you know, in the new age or raised to be, just whatever. They're not going to think the way that I think. And God wants to give everybody the opportunity to come to him. And so even people that have been arrested right now, God wants to give him the opportunity to come to him too. Now, not, that's not to say that, oh yeah, let's just let him off the hook. And No, absolutely not. But that's to say that Jesus died for people like him and people like me and people like you. And if I have learned one of the most important lessons that I have learned over the course of the past seven years has been the heart of the Father. 
because I didn't used to know the heart of the Father. I did not use, I, I, I couldn't wrap my mind around his great love for his people and for the lost, for people to come to him. I, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. And, you know, I was in the camp of, you know, like the doom and gloom camp. I was, I can't call it the black pill camp at that point because there, we, there's more information now that, that, that is available than there was back then. But I was kind of in the doom and gloom camp thinking, oh, we're all going to Hades in a handbasket. There's nothing we can, we're going to go into the tribulation and I just, bleh. But I don't believe that now. I'm not really even sure if we're on that timeline. Maybe. But I believe that what is coming is the greatest revival that the world has ever seen I mean, I can think of several prophets who come to mind, but this is probably one of the most powerful things that I'm getting ready to show you guys. And so, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys stuck around because this is powerful. And so, uh, as always, have hope. Remember, without a vision, the people perish. And that doesn't just mean, you know, they just fall over and die. It means that they die on the inside with, without hope. And it's, it's one thing to just proclaim, yeah, well, my hope is in God. But have you played that tape all the way through? Have you really thought about what it would be like? If the enemies of God got their way right now, have you ever really played that tape through? Because I remember I did in 2019. I started freaking out and crying out to God. And that is when God showed me. And that is when he began to connect some dots and show me some prophets. So, and this was one of them. As always, I love you guys. God bless you. And please enjoy this. I will see you in the next video. The vision of wickedness and impending danger is due to some device hidden in a place unknown to the present intelligence. That's what I have to tell you. And maybe even ignored. In other words, oh, that's, that's not important. This weapon is in a human mind. And the weapon that is in this human mind came to me when I saw some alphabetical letters. I saw some letters. First, I thought it was A to Z. Now, this is a, a puzzle to me right now. But God almost said to me, focus on this. So that the mystery can be unfolded. The letters were A and Q. That's all I saw. And he said, that's where it's at. Then I saw Russia. I saw Pakistan. And I saw a connection. That's all I saw there. And I remember that, but I didn't say it. That's important for you to take note of. Go out there and research. Sunil's going to as well. The vision of fire and water. Now, I was absolutely surrounded by evil. And I felt as Daniel did praying for his people. Now, let me just tell you what Daniel said. He said, while I was praying, the man Gabriel. Now, remember, Gabriel is one of the most powerful angels whom I'd seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly. 
Now you think about God and time. Why would it, God need an angel to move rapidly? Because you men have power to control things that happen on the earth because God put man on the earth. So when things happen, they can retard it, they can slow it down, or they can hasten it. And so he caused, the angel was caused to fly swiftly. That's what Daniel says. And it reached me about the time of the evening offering. offering. And I, I, I want, want you to, you to get, get this, this because, because it's, it's, it's so, so few people, people realize and understand the power of the evening the offering. offering. Because he says, the angel arrived and got to me about the time of the evening offering. I was standing in my garden. And suddenly the spirit came. And removed from my eyes scales. I was praying for America and I was praying for Israel. Nothing unusual. And suddenly behind me, starting behind my back, going in the form of an arrow, were hundreds of thousands of people. And I turned around and I was stunned at what I saw. This was not just a mere dream, but this was a vision. And so I raised my hand like this. And every one of them raised their hands. I looked back and they were doing the same thing. I shouted and they all shouted. They were one. They were one. One party. One party of people. It continued until I realized that the unity of these, amongst them stood one that God had set aside to be the leader of this nation. I couldn't quite see his face because that was not allowed because there was a mist that covered all the people and he was amongst them. And the Spirit of God made me look at him and he said, this man will throttle the enemies of Israel. This man will throttle the enemies of the West. And there are highly embarrassing moments that are about to occur for many, many politicians in this nation. There will be a shaking amongst... There will be a shaking amongst the de Democrats in the upcoming elections, but unsettling for the Republicans. Why is, why is God doing this? For God said, I am dissatisfied with what emerges from both parties. And then there is a nation he showed me, and took me, itching for a new kind of war with America. They will shout, impeach, impeach, they say. But nay. This nation shall come very subtly. But he shall not come in the time of President Obama. They shall come when this new one arises, my David, that I have set aside for this nation. And they shall say, what is your plan for this, this giant? And he will take a simple stone. Remember the name. And he will hold it up and they will laugh at him. But the plan is so brilliant, says the Lord. It could only have been given by me. Yeah. <laughs>